Asami Sato is a driven inventor with a successful business. She's a skilled fighter and the voice of reason for Korra's team avatar. With this, she's a very important character that helps balance out Korra's impulsive nature. However, there is way more to Asami Sato than just being a support for her team. Her character arc teaches us an important lesson. That lesson is the act of forgiveness. What is forgiveness? In the world of psychology, the definition is a conscious or deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance towards a person or a group who has harmed you, regardless of whether they deserve it. So let's take a closer look to see what Asami's arc is all about. Throughout Asami's tale, there are three major players that Asami has to forgive. The first one, and probably the easiest to guess, is her father Hiroshi. Throughout the books, Hiroshi and Asami's relationship was a bit rocky. Asami was a great support to her father, helping him run the family business Future Industries. However, that all changed when Hiroshi turned out to be an equalist who wanted to eliminate all benders, which so happened to be all of Asami's friends. This forces Asami to choose what is more important, family or justice for all. Although a firebender did kill her mother, she chooses to help her friends and all benders, which does not sit well with Hiroshi. This betrayal runs deep for Asami, and it forces her to become a little more distant and closed off from her friends. She's still willing to help, but she's a little more irritable and passive-aggressive towards people. At the end of book one, she and Bolin go against her father and the emotions run deep in this interaction. Hiroshi is still full of hatred for his wife's death that he almost kills his own daughter. Asami, on the other hand, is still full of resentment from the betrayal in the first place, saying that Hiroshi really is the worst dad ever. Bolin and Asami do manage to take down Hiroshi, but the anger and disdain for her father still holds true. This resentment is still there in book two when Asami can't even go visit Mako in prison because it reminds her of her dad. She also probably is really busy with her bankrupt companies. The next time Hiroshi and Asami interact is in book four. A long time has passed since the battle with the equalist, but Asami is still angry at her father. She goes to prison to see her father just so she can tell him off. In the process, Hiroshi tells Asami how proud he is of her, and this becomes a conflict within Asami. Should she try to forgive him or never see him again? After some thinking, Asami chooses to try to forgive him by playing some paisho, like they did when she was a kid. This small gesture is what helps Asami consciously release her resentment towards her father. This helps build a brand new relationship when they're making hummingbird suits to destroy Kovira's giant robot. In the end, Hiroshi sacrifices himself to help Team Avatar. Asami is saddened by the loss, but is still grateful that she was able to forgive him. Hiroshi and Asami's relationship shows us that forgiveness is easier said than done. It takes months, even years, to really let go and forgive the people that hurt you the most. The next person that Asami forgives is Mako. Asami and Mako have a complicated history. Maybe not as complicated as Asami and her father, but still complicated nonetheless. These two hit it off really well when Asami crashes into Mako on her moped. This leads them to start dating, which seems great at first. Both of them really enjoy spending time together. However, there are two factors that kind of cause this relationship to fall apart. One is Korra. Korra has a huge crush on Mako. That crush is something that puts a wedge between him and Asami. Korra kisses Mako out of the blue. This forces Mako into a corner, having feelings for both girls and doesn't want to hurt either of them. She sees the bond that Korra and Mako have for one another, forcing her to call him out for his feelings for Korra. However, Korra isn't the only factor that leads to their breakup. The other is her father's betrayal. Asami is a little more passive-aggressive and irritated after her father's betrayal because 
well, he kind of lied to his daughter for years. So when she finds out that Korra and Mako kissed, that same type of betrayal happens again, causing her to feel like she can't trust anyone close to her. I want to point out that Asami isn't really mad about the kiss. She's more upset that Mako didn't tell her that it happened. She found out by pressuring Bolin to tell her, and that level of distrust is what causes this relationship to fall apart. Moving on to book two, these two keep their distance from one another, only interacting when Bolin or Korra are with them. This could be because both have important jobs that take up most of their time, but it's not until Asami and Mako go on a sting mission that they finally interact one on one again. Within this mission, Asami pushes her past resentment towards Mako away because she can see his determination and passion for helping her and her family's company. However, all of that comes crashing down when Korra comes back into town. Mako doesn't remind Korra that they broke up because Mako never wants to hurt anyone's feelings, and with that, he hurts Asami again. This betrayal doesn't hurt as bad as the first time, but she's still disappointed with Mako. I wouldn't say it's full-on resentment, but there is some sadness here to what could have been. As book three starts, we see that Asami has been able to forgive Mako. She understands that he has a kind heart, but he's never really that good with his own feelings. By book four, it seems like their past relationship is behind them. They were able to casually chat with one another without any awkward emotions holding them back. If it weren't for Asami's kind nature and willingness to try to forgive, this friendship with Mako wouldn't have come to be. The final person that Asami has to forgive is Korra. Surprisingly, this doesn't have to do with the love triangle thing at all. Asami's resentment towards Korra comes in book four. After the fight with the Red Lotus, Korra was mentally and physically not okay. She went to recover with Katara at the South Pole. After three years, Asami is excited to see her friend. However, Korra is nowhere to be found. This is where the sour feelings come into play. If we look back at book three, these two balance one another out really well. Asami was Korra's voice of reason, the one that helped Korra when her emotions flied off the handle. Korra helped Asami become more spontaneous and less guarded by past hurt feelings. However, book four suddenly makes these two nervous and on edge. The three-year gap makes Asami more irritable and disappointed by Korra's actions. When they reunite, Asami doesn't know the full extent of why Korra didn't come back sooner. She doesn't know the traumas that plague Korra, so for Korra to come swooping in to protect Asami from her father makes Asami a little defensive. Although Korra has good intentions here, she doesn't have the full story. Also, Asami doesn't need anyone to protect her. For goodness sake, she can flip over a freaking motorcycle. It's kind of funny how in the past, Asami was the one that was so stable when it came to her emotions, while Korra was the one that blew up. After three years, we have a little bit of a reverse Uno going on. Asami is more confident and willing to put boundaries in place so that people don't treat her like a welcome mat, and Korra is a little more tentative and willing to talk things out. These changes to their personalities are what adds a little more tension to their relationship. However, once Asami listens to Korra's problems about her past enemies, Asami is able to let go of her bitterness towards Korra and truly embrace her for who she is. In the end, when Korra apologizes for being gone so long, Asami understands that Korra has nothing to apologize for. Asami's past resentment is gone, and she's just happy to have Korra back in her life. Throughout The Legend of Korra, Asami Sato teaches us the important lesson of what it means to forgive. It's not an easy thing to do. She shows us that it's better to release feelings of resentment and vengeance towards people so that we can find peace within ourselves, to learn from our mistakes and move on, so that we can be more confident within ourselves and in our relationships with others. But hey, that's just what I think. Just wanted to say thank you guys so much for all the support on the video about Korra. Let me know if you would like to see more videos like this. If so, what other Legend of Korra characters should I make a video about? If you liked this video, you may enjoy this one about Korra, or you can binge watch the whole playlist here. Hope you have a lovely day, and I'll see you next time.